You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's American Horror Story After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's American Horror Story After Show. Good evening, After Buzzers. We are here at the After Buzz Studios doing all things American Horror Story. I'm your host for the evening, David Skiffalady, joined as always by the lovely ladies. Hi, I'm Oriana. <laughs> Sarah Huggins Hello. to my left, Jillian Leff across the table Hello. with Oriana Leo to her left, and we have a special, special guest so in the studio tonight, the Scream Queen herself, actor-producer Brooke Lewis. Welcome. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Thank you guys so much for having me. I am so honored to be here, and like I said, you know, I don't BS. You guys know your stuff. I've been watching, and I'm so impressed with your intellectual commentary and, you know, really dissecting the show. Amazing. So I'm thrilled to be here. Thank, Thank you. you so much. What Why a don't great you episode. To I know. To be have before. you be here. Yes, with but, all the gore. I know. Oh, but before we get started, I do want you to give um, our fans out there a brief little intro into your world. Ooh, what do you want to know? Well, I know you do have five <laughs> films coming out in 2014. I do, I do. I'm so blessed after doing Tony Dean's Wedding off Broadway for years and then going on to do some network sitcoms, I sort of broke out in horror and sci-fi in about 08. So a big film I did was called I Murders that's directed by Robbie Bryan. And yeah, I started in that with Tony Todd, Candyman, everybody, all the horror oh, fans scary. out there. <laughs> right? Yeah. And William Forsythe and Gabrielle Anwar from... Um, Burn Notice, amazing cast. So that was a huge sort of blessing that kind of put me on the map in the horror mystery thriller genre. And then I went on to win the B Movie Golden Cub Award for Leading Lady Scream Queen of the Year 2010. Congratulations. Yeah. What? Like for Slime City Massacre, which is directed by Greg Lamerson. Then I created Ms. Vampy for any of my fans out there. She's like a, she's my alter ego. She's a like mobster Brooklyn vampire. Nice. So she talks like this and she's fun and Jillian, you know, the jury. I know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm really fortunate. And, and the film, shout out to um, Lazarus, which is Thomas Churchill's film, amazing horror mystery zombie thriller that'll be out next year. And Mark Klebanoff's The Morning, which has sort of a sci fi twist. And Neil Johnson's Starship Rising, Starship the Coming Darkness. So. You know, it's, it's going to be a good year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very Thank busy. You. But most importantly, she is an American horror story super fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brooke is officially in the fan coven. We yes. um, we put a spell on her, <laughs> and, and now she's ours. So I we love should have it. some kind of initiation. I know. Oh, I think she just went through it. <laughs> watching, watching the episode. With watching us. The episode Wait, with I us? thought you yes. wouldn't let me talk about that on air. Hold on, hold on. I thought that was private. Wait a minute. <laughs> Nothing is private at no. the Afterbus TV. Uh, no, <laughs> absolutely nothing. <laughs> but nothing. we really need to jump into tonight's yeah. episode. Lots to talk this about. This was season three, episode nine. The head. The head. We were a little bit scared of the title. Didn't know what that meant. Obviously, it well. Meant. Obviously, it was we the knew head a little of bit Willary, what it was about. But again, yeah. again, it, yeah, it was kind of like what? What are they going to do right, with this? Right. Well, there are lots of heads in our story. I mean, we have Fiona. Mm -hmm. We have Laveau. Yeah. We have mm -hmm. Hank's father. Mm -hmm. Right. Good thinking, sir. And oh, we have Kathy thoughts. Bates's head. Head. Kathy Bates. So you're saying like head of the family? Head of the, head of the oh, coven? Yeah. Head of the business? Yes. And the head. Mm. You are so clever. Thank you're you. really smart, David. Mm -hmm. It just came out my butt. <laughs> <laughs> As he points to his mouth, he says, my buddy points to his mouth. That's so cute. Sorry. So we open the episode, and did anyone catch where that was? Was it Chattahoochee? Chattan Chattanooga? 
It was definitely not Tennessee. It was not Chattanooga. Chattanooga. I think it was the Chattahoochee River. I don't know, but it was in it 1991. Was a national park. It was 91. I thought it was yeah, 71. 1991. So no, <laughs> Carl was commenting on Twitter. Our okay. super fan, Carl. Hi, Carl. Yeah. Hi, he was saying, Carl. um, how did Hank look so young in 91, and then now he's so much older? I know. But That's why I think again, it was 71. No, it was 1991 for sure. Yeah, because we all kind of rolled our eyes. I don't know. I wrote 71 down, but I also can't see anything. So (laughs) I wrote 91, and Carl backed that up. So all right, whatever. Whatever. Hank, baby Hank, baby Hank Hank is on his first witch hunting excursion with Dad. Yeah. And he has to put them down. I hate how they call it that. Like a dog. Like put the put the witch down using a silver bullet and a rifle. Mm -hmm. What did we think about that scene? I okay. So personally, I've never been. Hunting. I don't know if anyone here on our panel tonight has ever been hunting. I have, I have not. I have not. Okay. Unless Brooke? she can hunt Brooke? Louis Vuitton shoes, I don't hunt. <laughs> no, no. Louis Vuitton does hunt make for some flats. You hunt, hunt, for, flats. hunt for deals. Yes. My kind of lady. <laughs> yes. I have been but never participated. I am from Texas okay. after all, so okay. it's like... Yeah. Okay. So when you are... When you go hunting, yes. how do you refer to... The animals, like when you're talking about them. I mean, you, you don't say things like "put them down." It's a game. You're so just like you're yeah. hunting the game. Yeah, you're right? hunting the game. Right? I yeah. No. Or just question. like being specific about the you, animal. You've like, never played I'm Deer hunting. Hunter on Nintendo. Yeah. Come on, yeah. David. No. Okay, we need duck hunt. Duck hunt. Okay, All right. Okay. Same thing. But essentially, it's the it's a game. So it's it like is. the game is whatever it is you're hunting. Right. And if you're hunting ducks, or you're hunting right. squirrels, or you're hunting elephants, or you're hunting yeah. deer, witches, you're going to be going after the game or the target or the mark or whatever they're yeah. going to call it. But they're not going to say put it down with a silver bullet. Might we add that was impressive that you caught that by the way. I was <laughs> yeah. very impressed. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so he this witch comes out. The dad, his dad, she was looking sort of fierce too, scary. She had Jersey girl hair. Yeah, she mm-hmm. had, cr- but dad wrestles, dad she wrestles her up by shooting into the bushes. Well, did he shoot into the bushes or did he shoot her? I thought he was like, I'm going to wrestle her up. And he, so he shot, yeah. shoots into the bushes and all the birds come out. Right. And right. I'm thinking, oh, maybe they are going to shoot birds and not people. <laughs> people. people. Well, no, but it's like, okay, so he's going to shoot in there. So his son, who has never hunted before, has a clear shot at this right. Linda Blair, like old Linda Blair witch that comes yeah. out. That is what I'm saying. Crazy <laughs> yeah. woman Crazy with white eyes. eyes. I was literally yeah. waiting for her to spew green vomit. Like, I just thought that would be like the cake. And well, then she, she spews, spews fire. Fire. Yeah. Jinx. She spews fire. I want some coke. But he still can't do it. But no. he still can't do it because he's a kid. Well, he's a child, but I later on I think it's it's very yeah, it's hinted he towards he has later. a heart. Mm-hmm. And he is sort of wrestling with this idea of whether or not he wants to be a hunter or he just wants to love. So here's the question. Does he yes. want to be a hunter? Like is he fighting between being a hunter um and and following his heart or is he fighting between his father's approval. Well, Burke, what do you think? I, I think you're making a great point, Ariana. I think that both, and like we actually, as we were viewing, turned to each other and talked about how the beautiful thing about this episode is that it's the first, if, if and correct me if I'm wrong, but the first episode where Hank is shown as human. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, his right. human side, his heart, like you said. So I have to agree with you. I think it's a little bit both. Because it seems like now that he's not with Foxy anymore, um, and now we see this humanizing side of him, of him wanting to have the love and affection of his father, right. and that seems to be contingent on his um, efficacy as an providing intel um, on the witches. Right. And he wants to go beyond that barrier and get his hands dirty and show that he really is part of the, as a witch hunter. Well, and it seems like, I mean, his father's pretty much given up on getting him, him to be a hunter. Right, right. So I just wonder how much he wants to be a hunter versus how much he wants to be part of the club. Right, how much he wants approval from his father. Well, and his dad kept saying, never forget what they are. He said it like a million times. And how much he genuinely does want love, you know, which we see again later, not to jump ahead. Mm -hmm. You know what I loved? It's true. Um, When Fiona approached Marie Laveau and was like, hey, (laughs) BZ, got your head. (laughs) Um, we should we should like get together. We so should talk. So Fiona comes to Cornrow yeah. City with the head. 
<laughs> of Kathy Bates. <laughs> Lollery. I, sh- I meant to make, you know, over Lollery. Christmas break, I'm going to make you a beautiful Can little we, like, float chart. Post it yes, it's going to have yeah. all the characters' yeah. names and their faces. Perfect. <laughs> and it's only you, a couple that he forgets. It's okay, the like, main couple. I figured, like, if we the do some couple. Kyle flashcards. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'll work. I could get you on board. Um, yeah. So, anyway. And she says, <laughs> She's searching you're not, for an alliance. Yeah. If you're not going to take this head back or work with me here, at least give her a wash and set. <laughs> which I thought was awesome. Because <laughs> that makes her go into talks with her. Totally. Well, and I love how, I mean, I was about to call her Kathy Bates now. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. I love how Lollery is just like, I mean, she's talking. Like, as soon as the head just started she's, speaking. Are you insane? Yeah, you can't like, make a deal with her? Yeah. Well, my favorite part is that they go into the back, and the body <laughs> is standing up, and the hand is moving. It's reacting hand is, to everything. The hand is swatting the flies that are accruing at its neck. Which Did you notice that? It kept going up just to <laughs> swat a fly. So she can so easily, like, just... Weird whatever she me. wants. But I agree with you. Right. A little ridiculousness going it on. Is a okay. Bit I mean, of ridiculousness. not that we haven't had suspension of reality with the show many, many <laughs> yes. times, but I agree with you. Right. Yeah. I mean, we know that she can't die, and the head is already talking on its right. own, but the body is standing there. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you were to. Wouldn't how you would want you to sit re- down? Right? Something. I don't Come know. on. Sit down and relax. Take yeah. your load off. <laughs> Take your head off. You lay down. So I basically. They're like, um, Fiona's like, all right, your tribe, my coven, let's do this. And Marie Laveau's reaction is, and I quote, which hunter, which hunters is a white woman's worry. I, I, I love that. I did too. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the my Which favorite. obviously we know that Marie Laveau was in on the the Hank, uh, right, Hank the skank. Why. It is uh, a white woman's worry. It, yeah, it is a white woman worry, but mm, you not know. For long. Not so much now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we see we see Foxy Cordelia Fox in the kitchen mm-hmm. who is trying to deal with her blindness. Well, it seems like at this point in the episode and at this point in her blindness, she's sort of grown accustomed to it and she's getting kind of She wants to be good yeah. mm-hmm. at being a blind lady. She wants to right? live her life. She wants to live her life. She wants she's independence. She's readjusting. Yeah. Yeah. Or freedom, right. if you yeah. will. Yeah. There you go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um... And we get a very tender moment between Myrtle and Foxy. You know what I loved? I loved the point where um, Foxy said to Myrtle, I don't want to touch you because I know that you didn't do it. Right. And I don't I, need magic. I know show, everything. Yeah, to show me what I already know is true. Yeah. And we really got to see sort of the closeness factor between them, which helped build the backstory to what Myrtle Snow ended up doing. Oh, my God. Okay, but... Which okay, was awesome. Just a quick question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I... I don't think Myrtle Snow is a bad person. However, it's mighty convenient that she said, give me a big hug so that you can put all the worries out of your mind. And Foxy says no. And then she goes and gets her fresh eyeballs, which we'll talk about in a minute, yeah. but she can't see her use her touch anymore. So she says, no, I don't want to. And then Myrtle's the one that gets her new eyeballs, and then she can no- doesn't have her... Vision her vision anymore. anymore. Mm, so I'm just saying, like, she never took the opportunity to really hold on to her tight when she could to get the truth. Right. Mm. And then now she never will. Yeah, so what is her truth? So we my don't my one truth. question was just, like, what what will we never know about Myrtle? Or what will she never know about Myrtle? She didn't care I'm, to know. Right. I'm not sure that there is a lot about yeah. Myrtle that Myrtle doesn't already tell us. Put out on the table. Right. I mean, I feel like she is an open book. Yeah. I, I mean, how, just, how do you feel, Brooke? Again, I agree with you. Yeah? Um, I do. Uh, but you're making an amazing point. I mean, this is, this is why I love you guys, because I watch you, and you discover things that I think a lot of people don't. So, I don't know. Will it reveal itself later? I'm just kind of throwing it in there as we, I think we saw Myrtle do some things that I know that I didn't expect her to do. Right. Yes, I, I agree. That, it made me wonder what Little else is she capable of that we will only find out as a surprise later. Well, right. we do know that since she has returned from death, uh, she is quite the ferocious woman. Right. Um, <laughs> as we see Love with that. her style, her voice, she's very, you know. Her skin, she's glowing. Her skin, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did. That did cross my mind. Um, I want to believe that Myrtle is truly good because she has had true intentions her entire life. 
But who knows? Something could have gone screwy in that Louisiana mud that uh, Misty got all over her, and she could maybe be coming back a little bit different than we thought. Right. Who knows? Just a little she bit She says she's more of a witch now than she ever was. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the next <sighs> thing that we see is... Hank in Atlanta. Mm. Yes, at his father's office. office Financial company. Delta. Delphi. 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 Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, his, we find out that his father is the CEO of a major financial institution. Cover. Which is his yeah. <laughs> cover. But I mean, you also need money to live. Right, right. right. You can't, <laughs> you can't Silver live off of expensive. Pay right. that much. <laughs> Hunting is not, I think, a profession. <laughs> it's I a think hobby. It is a. Life choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that should be like your tagline, you know, like on the Real Housewives, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's the yeah. tagline. We turned around. <laughs> Which, Hunting by the way, a hobby. Um, uh, Sarah pointed this out, but oh, yeah. Hank's dad was on Smash. Yes. So, like, let's play Six Degrees of Separation. So, um, the Axeman is uh, her oh, yes. Angelica Houston's brother. Half brother. Oh my so god! Connection there. Full circle. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we just noticed these little quirky things. Smash, sorry, but <laughs> I got really excited. Um, but we find out in this sort of scene that Hank was never actually supposed to be killing anybody. He was supposed to marry Foxy, Gain live in the house, and be the Inside eyes man. and ears. But I think for the hunters. I think that's because, I mean, his dad figured out early on, right, he just didn't have it in him to do it. Well, he didn't have the heart to do it, I think. And then he marries Fiona, and we see it in a moment in here. Thank you. (laughs) Weird people. Um, He marries Foxy, whatever, and his father says, he says to his father, you disfigured my wife when we find out that they threw the acid yeah. in her face, and he said, no, that was I disfigured a witch. Yeah. And he said also, to, you should never lose yourself in the lie. Right. And it made me think of, like, undercover agents, you know, how that can be really yeah. tricky, that I don't, doesn't seem, in this episode, like you were saying, Brooke, like, he's really humanized, and it doesn't seem like he even knows which way is up. He, lo- he seems right. to really love Foxy. I agree. I agree. He, he really so does. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think, I think again, addressing the lie and being a single woman in a crazy city, you know, I think that a lot of us live, I think that's very real. And again, that's the brilliance of Ryan Murphy and Brad and the writing and the subtext, you know, is that a lot of us live lies in love, yeah. you know? And so I think that that a is lot of us lose ourselves in the lie of whatever lie of the story we've told, the picture we've painted, our own right. reality. That's brilliant. Thank and not you. only is he mm. is he getting lost in that, but how many times have you guys sort of felt like you've had to prove yourself in your lifetime? You know, he's trying to prove himself to his dad, so he kills Alexandra Breckenridge. I forget right. what her character's name is, the redhead in the hotel room. Firestarter. He yeah, called the dad called her. Firestarter. <laughs> um, and he does a completely sloppy job of it because the only thing that he is thinking is, I killed a witch. It's right. good. I killed and a I witch, got rid of the body. Yeah. But I, his father's like, you used a credit card yeah. to pay for the hotel room. It could have linked been linked back to the corporation and then therefore to me. So I had to go back and, and kill the witnesses yeah. and clean up your mess. Yeah. Good I, job. I thought, which I didn't quite know what it meant, but I thought it was interesting that his father said the hunt isn't only about the kill. Mm-hmm. Which, well, it's about, he explained it sort of as right. a, a pr- seeking a prey, like a, a lion would it's would like wait the, in the bushes and right. check out the scene and look right. at the, you know, would hunt, would literally look and take all the information, Before. and then the kill is the very end of yeah. the game. Right. Right? So he's just so Hank clearly Hank, doesn't enjoy the game. He doesn't get it. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't get that it's a game, that it's like, right. you, you gather all this information and you make a calculated move. Right. Mm-hmm. You choose the weakest one in the pack. He does not get that. Um, Speaking of making a calculated move, um, (laughs) Miss Myrtle Snow decided to have um, (laughs) the Hemby and Quentin over for dinner. Probably one of the more gruesome scenes we've seen so far this season. I did actually Um, close my eyes for a second. I pulled a Jillian. I did not. My eyes went bigger. I will say that the actual taking of the eyes didn't bother me. It was later when we saw what she did with the other body parts and that she was like playing with them. That oh, really yes. was disturbing. Really? That didn't bother me as really? much. Really? I it think was... it was the eyeball being gouged out by a melon baller. 
for me. <laughs> well, she invites them over for. We know Jillian loved that part. She loves the gory stuff. For lunch, and she gives them sort of sort of a, a palate cleanser yeah. of bald melons mm-hmm. with some sort of. Um, it was, was a, it a a liquid or was it, it was an herb? Some kind of herb or root nightshade, something in the nightshade family. Yeah. I think. Okay. But so it so causes some, kind of herb. some sort of yeah. poison yeah. that poison. causes temporary the paralysis. The human statue system that's, is yeah, what that's she the way she put it. Right. <laughs> which it, which it did, and she yeah. said it it feels awful, but I had I have no intention of killing you. <laughs> But maybe after dessert, because I worked really hard on dessert and I love key lime pie. I mean, who doesn't? I really love But the thing is, pie. as much as this is fascinating about Myrtle, and I think she's kind of fabulous, it's starting to wander into, like, sociopathic territory. Totally. Where she's like, anything for my little birdie Cordelia, and, like, pops the eyes out. Well, and she's then doing it sort up. of, like, out of love. Ish. Ish. I mean, uh-huh. it's like, it's a thing that we've seen before. A crazy mother. We, saw, we see it in... Um, Mommy Dearest, where she beats right. her children out of love. I mean, I know it's like it's pushing <laughs> totally the boundaries and totally we're calling, crazy. Is that what we're calling Joni's um, bleach enema? Was that love too? Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Yes, she did that out of love. <laughs> yes, it was. Love. It's completely That's insane. True. Not to go too far ahead, slash, make a prediction, but I'm just saying. I'm curious to see how Myrtle, since she's become so protective of Cordelia, there was sort of a moment with Cordelia and Misty um, in the in the herb room mm-hmm. where Misty is now looking to Cordelia as an icon. So I'm wondering if their closeness is going to be affected, like Myrtle will seek revenge on their closeness. Um, Cause it looked to me like they were gonna have like a les make out set. Like, they got yeah. really close, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, whoa. <laughs> I also thought going? that was going to happen for a second. Me no. too. Would have been Vagina resurgence. Like, awesome. yeah. <laughs> All right. Segue. Can, yeah. I, can I? I just yes. want to interject yes. for one second. Yes. Having yes. nothing yeah. to do with VJJs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not right now. But can I just say, because I do know that there are a lot of horror filmmakers and, and real visual people watching, mm-hmm. that scene with it, which I loved, the yes. eyes removal. But can we talk about the cinematography and the art direction, mm-hmm. the yes. colors of the fruit mm-hmm. and the grapes and her? red belt and uh, I was just like wow mm-hmm. right am I yes. right though no, right? it was yeah. a beautiful, beautifully, beautifully shot beautiful. scene and the actors you have to give it to them for doing their statue oh my because god because they weren't really frozen they were just like they were in a yeah. spot and then they kept but they kept moving and morphing and I thought that must have been a difficult thing to shoot yeah it, was, it Ryan, probably was <laughs> Ryan Murphy knows how to do major moments and then the you extreme close up on yeah. the the melon ball the, the eye falling into the so see good. I didn't see that oh you didn't yeah. see the eyeball no. falling into you need to go back and rewatch it because it's actually pretty incredible it is beautiful I'm glad we didn't have to see like the part like then we just cut to Cordelia having the new eye well she got um, we, she gets her vision back and she gets yes. one of each eye which, which is, is kind of awesome one blue one brown mm-hmm. yes and she's talking about her her cat that had one blue one brown eye and it was just beautiful I totally missed that I couldn't figure out what she was talking about <laughs> she's talking about a cat yeah. she had a moment you know kitty and she okay, was like yeah. you know wouldn't but it be great if you had one blue and one I'm calling it now Myrtle's going cray cray <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't understand personally why um if she was gonna kill them and chop them up anyway, why not take both eyes, both from one, one person, yeah. as opposed to one of each? Especially but I guess it's sort of her revenge. Mm. I don't know. But maybe we'll find kind out pointless. in another episode as to that why she, has she did that. A piece of both of them, I don't know. Right, like a special power or something. Yeah. Like each. We it never know. Just seems like for your <laughs> that for would your be very daughter, interesting. Mm. You would think you'd want her to be as beautiful as possible, and you give her two matching eyeballs. Huh. I think. Two different color eyeballs is kind of. Sarah well, Paulson is fierce either way. Fiona was yeah. a little troubled by the oh, she was mismatch. A, li- a little troubled. Yeah. She was like, "What did you do? Ew. Why did you do this?" And Fiona was still going along with the lie that she told herself about Myrtle committing the capital crime. Right. Well, I mean, so she's blaming Myrtle. That for was later. I didn't mean to jump ahead, but <coughs> what? When Fiona sees her eyes. That's okay. Okay. Um, when Mer- Fiona, Myrtle's blaming Fiona, Fiona's blaming Myrtle, and yet Myrtle has just killed 
two witches. That was what I and was thinking. And is totally fine nonchalant with it. about it, totally fine with it. And she's like, you know what? Fine. You you killed me. I'm going to kill you back. But Fiona says, you know, I I could exile you yes. to Paramus, New Jersey. <laughs> right. <laughs> To Yay, Paramus! <laughs> Brooke and I had a moment. We did. We both know where Paramus is. I feel like none of her. Is it, we had like it, we had like a flirty like kind of Paramus moment. Is it miserable? Is, right. it, is it miserable there? Um, you know, there's a big mall. Yeah, yeah that's what there's a said. strip mall. There's a, not there's even a, big a strip outlet mall. mall. It's a there. huge mall. Um, In Paramus. Yeah, you know. So I mean, really, a Jersey girl would love to be exiled there. <laughs> um, but I guess Myrtle, not so much. Not so much. Um, which is might not be popular there. I don't know. <laughs> Um, and then at this point, we find out that Foxy's visions are gone as well. Yes. Um, but then we flip to Nan and Luke and Patty Lupone in the hospital. Yes, and we sort of just get like a brief touch of MM and Hilarious. Zoe this week, Fine which was great. Me. Yeah. Um, MM sort of reveals to Patty Lupone that they're <laughs> witches, and she's like, come on, you stupid. Baby. Um, <laughs> Be- <laughs> oh my god. Not, I mean, I bet you that's what she wanted to say. Right. But she didn't. I think MM would say whatever she wanted to say. Right. Yeah. Yes, but she's being censored. Okay. <laughs> so Luke is speaking through um, Nan. And Luke is speaking through Nan. Mm-hmm. And he has some good things to say. He has some kind well, of really awesome things well, to say. Well, the first time but. we see Nan and Luke sort of connect, we find out that uh, he tells Nan about this song that oh, right. um, his mom used to sing him. And forgive me, but I was really hoping for a Patty Lupone belt, and instead we got a cry <laughs> song. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Of course. David was like, oh, what, did you, like what did you enjoy oh, about it? Well, because yeah. it was like... You just love her? I think that Patti LuPone is such an amazing actress mm-hmm. that she doesn't necessarily... We don't need the... Belt. The belt to to come to, through. And to show her We don't need yeah. to be yeah. American Horror Story mm-hmm. musical well, bro, episode. Exactly. Smash right. yeah. Yeah. Well, I would love that, personally. Brooke, you did theater in New York, so I do you did. think that it's... It's sort of better when you're a stage actor transitioning to screen, or do you think it's a completely different game? I think it's a completely different game. I think it's really challenging. I think that it took me a gazillion classes, not to get off the subject, you know, to bring it down mm-hmm. for film and television. I think it's so different. So I think that when an actress like Patti Lapone has the opportunity, which, you know, Ryan and the guys created for her, it's it's a brilliant choice to go the, op- the opposite, you mm-hmm. know, to go the absolute other yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And she's a mother, and she's, you know, sort of remembering her eight-year-old son when he broke his arm, and she's singing this song to feel better, and she's... Well, it's another humanizing moment, right? right? Mm -hmm. Where it it shows her vulnerability and her raw emotionality to be crying through that song. And she still sounded awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she she did sound good, but I really (laughs) wanted some... Gypsy. <laughs> I mean, we all do. But, but you know it. what? Also, in that scene, which Ariana brought up earlier too, about the themes, which I don't know if this was discussed even, but what I, you know, she was talking about the infidelity comes up again, mm. right? right? Which, which right. is so interesting to me because if obviously we all know first season of Mary right. Mars story, right? Mm. So there's always the infidelity mm. that's somewhere right. that's appears, true. That's right? That's a great observation. Yeah. Thank Thank you. Um, didn't even I didn't even connect mm. that either. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. every season. True. I believe it's very heavy, yeah. Right is which is so genius yeah. of Mr. You know Ryan Murphy. So we saw the infidelity <laughs> with Hank, mm-hmm. right? Hank was right. Hank, so he was unfaithful, mm-hmm. and then right. here it comes back again it's with other character li- mm-hmm. storylines. Oh. So yeah. Hmm. Um, Interesting. So many things happening in my head right now. Yeah, I know. There's <laughs> okay. a lot more. Let's go to I mean, something even. Let's go to something more fun. Okay. Um, Sorry. No, I'm excited to talk about this because I thought it was a great scene. Um, Queenie uh, yes. takes Film Madame, Festival. Madame oh my God. Lollery and makes her watch every <laughs> single powerful uh, African American film <laughs> of her lifetime. Eight hours of roots about slavery. About yes. slavery Wait, and baths. Yeah. And baths. And yeah. can yeah. we just yeah. say? Sorry. Just saying, Babs. 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 I just aged myself, but yes, Babs. <laughs> I remember that. And let's to you, her music. Um, I thought that was brilliant. And, Me you know, too. in the beginning, I was sort of like a little bit disheartened because Madame Lollery was still being so stubborn about who she was and I'm going to close my eyes the entire right. time and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, I mean, we find out that 
things happen <laughs> towards the end, which we'll bring up later, yeah, yes. but I thought it was things. a great moment that even though Queenie has been punished for, or, or not punished, I, I guess we don't know what has happened to her, but um, she still decided to take the head and hide it in her apartment. Like, I think it's like above the... The salon. the salon. Yeah, yeah. she's upstairs. Yeah, yeah. which is yeah, pretty that's risky. Like where she's staying, to, right? Because didn't yeah. Madame Laveau ask her to take it outside and like burn and it? Burn it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and she's keeping it to sort of teach this woman yeah. a quote unquote lesson. She's like, you can die, but you're not going to leave this earth until you learn a thing or two about which the people, I loved. which I love too, about the people that you that you wronged. I have you, a question. Mm-hmm. If she burned the head, would she actually die? I mean. That's the maybe. I mean, that's she, the thing. Would she? I don't think so. Right? I mean, neither. I don't and then think there's, there's the body any getting in rid the of cage. Her. Right? Like What's her going body on is with that? headless horseman it's just waving the flag. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot to be desired about right. that situation. Um, we get to see Marie Laveau make a voodoo doll. We do, yeah, which, which is awesome. Which, another thing, though, is that she wrecked Hank. Like. He like him. hurt him yeah. very badly, and and says you better finish it tonight. And I'm thinking, how? How do you break someone's like arms and legs and gut them, <laughs> and then them they're too. all normal that night? Maybe she fixed him. Yeah, because later when he goes he to talk fine. to Foxy, he's, yeah, he's drunk. He was just drunk. Yeah. He got wasties. But in this, and you said it in there when we were watching it too. Like this was the first episode where we were like, oh, Hank. Hank, like kind of felt actually bad felt bad for, for the him. guy. Well, he for sort of second. gets this. Yeah. Mm, Warning from Laveau. Right. Lurie, what's her name? Yeah. yeah. Laveau. Yeah, I was right. Right. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Two candies for me. Yeah. Um, to kill the ladies by this evening or he's dead. Mm-hmm. And he goes, before doing anything, he gets drunk and then goes to Foxy and is like, look, I'm here to protect you. I want to protect you. I love you. Take me back. And she's like, no. Your shit's in the, the box, box upstairs. Yeah. Get it. Get out. <laughs> bye bye. And she was serving us some Beyonce yes. irreplaceable. Yeah. <laughs> 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 she she looks to, to me during that moment and goes, "All your stuff in the box." To the left. To the left. Like, <laughs> well, and Good. there was that That's moment true. with Misty and him. Was that just him like recognizing that that was her, yes. or was that just like a flashback for us? No, that like, was him he recognized her. that he was trying to kill her. And but she he didn't away. even. Yeah, he was unsuccessful. Yeah. Yeah. which is which just brings up another moment that he was he failed sort of right. unsuccessful <laughs> right. in his witch hunt he's career. <laughs> he's a failure. Let's face it. Exactly. But to a certain degree, I think it is warranted because of being a failure, he is actually. I think in, in this moment, we see that he is in love with Cordelia. Right. Yeah. Then we see his love for her, and he does go get her get his stuff as she's asked him. And he meets Andorra, the, the dog, the guard dog. Mm-hmm. You know, what? an observation, really quick, is Fiona was looking amazing this week. Mm-hmm. Like cancer mm-hmm. is like cancer. What? Well, yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, does call her out on it at the beginning of the episode because that's a nice wig. Yeah, but oh, still, but she looks I mean, good. But she does look good compared, compared to last week. Last yes. week mm-hmm. she was like on death's door, so mm-hmm. I was a little surprised that she yes. was like, mm-hmm, okay, and like you know, doing her thing. So anyway. She has a watchdog named Andorra. <laughs> <laughs> well, they need a guard dog, yes. she says. Um, that, can, that will attack on command. Yes. A female one. Well, well she says that, uh, uh, that's that what she a preferred. female dog is more loyal when um, protecting. protecting their family. Right. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, is true. It is true. Yes. Yeah. Um, Don't poke the beast. Yeah. <laughs> Girl power. <laughs> Girl power. Mike, just saying. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Um, Hank leaves, and the dog finds Kyle, and so Fiona finds Kyle. Oh my gosh! And, and Kyle's Ka- hugging Kyle the dog. Pulls a Lenny. I know. Yes. Of, of mice, mice and men, and men on Andorra. Do do How many high schoolers do we have listening? Did you read the book yet? Yes. yes. <laughs> we all had to read it. We, we all did. of us had to read it, and we Not all know me. what Lenny did. You didn't. But I read it up on edge. You know yeah. what Lenny okay. did, right? I did. Yeah. Well, Kyle pulls a Lenny, and wow, that took me by surprise. I didn't think that was going to happen. Me neither. First of all, who knew that Fiona had a dog? And second of all, well, she knew. just got it. She yes. did, but I mean that she yeah. would, as as um, Hank says, you hate all animals and living, living things. things. <laughs> and she's like, yes. mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. <laughs> I need this dog. So that was really surprising. It was yeah. surprising. I think what for me was more surprising is when I'm going to jump to the end of the episode. When we get to the end of the episode, and Fiona has sort of 
rejuvenated, rejuvenated, repaired Kyle, and he's right. looking good, speaking yeah. fine. He's looking good. Playing cards he's with playing her. Rin Jummy. He's J- what is it? Rin Jummy. <laughs> so Kyle's Lipped speaking it. better than you now. Jimmy. Yeah, that's amazing. It's kind of incredible. And wait, yeah. can I just yes. can I acknowledge one quote because yes. I yes. loved oh, it? Yeah. And this is I'm just so obsessed with the ageism stuff that goes on in this you know in the season especially. So so when when Fiona says also to, when the girls come in when um, Madison and Zoe and she's like. Since none of you girls oh, yeah. can right. play cards with the damned, right? So right. Like, it was like a little dig for oh, yeah. us, you know, seasoned women. Like since <laughs> the, you know, you girls couldn't deal with the you know, the boy. I fixed your boy. Right. Or whatever. Like but I'm a woman. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now he's gonna protect us like a dog. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. She need, you, we need an attack dog. Frank and Kyle might have been a better choice of protection. Than the dog. Yeah. 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 Fully. I that. mean, he was a little bit crazy. The, I mean, remember the stuff he was capable he of? He bludgeoned his mom yeah. with a trophy. <laughs> Doesn't mean that he can't do it still. <laughs> he will do so, he will. but the point yeah. is, is that there, he's going to take care of the women who made him. That, yes. Yeah, that and that he cute. will he will go cray cray on who they sick him on. Right, which right? is great. Which right. is great. Yes, right. another person who sucked themselves on somebody tonight <laughs> was Hank. That was a creepy. I know it was really strange. There was no right. need to point it out. We all no. heard it. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> Hank I'm missing goes that. crazy on the voodoo lady. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, yes. we couldn't. I mean, my heart was just racing during now, that Now, when hole. he was preparing himself and he's getting his shotgun and he's getting his nine millimeters and whatever, he's doing all his guns. Did you think he was going to the. Um, to I, the hair salon, to the voodoo ladies, or did you think he was going to the coven? I thought he was going to the salon, but I want to ask you, Brooke, that was like a, a mass death scene. Have you ever shot something like that with all those, um, what are they called, where the gu- the fire goes off? That's a great like question. Oh, a squib, a squib, right? Is that what it's called? That's yes. yeah. a great question. Yeah. Um, no, I would say I was had to run from al- being stomped on al- by aliens. Okay. Not oh. really know, but no, nothing like that. Like that, honestly, and you guys know my reaction in there, like you yeah. Sarah, I, my heart was pounding. I mean, on so many levels. A, you know, you start thinking about all the shootings that, uh, yeah. I don't even want to bring it up. It's so sad and scary, yeah. you know. But, you know, that go on in this right. world, how right. sick it is and how in a split second someone can snap and go and it's done, you know? Right. So, mm-hmm. like, you think of those things and then the visuals and then, and can we address the song that was right. playing in the background? Oh like, the impact gosh. of this scene, yeah. I'm still shaking when major. I think about it. Yeah. Major, yeah. sick, sick, sick ending. Like, well, wow. Well, Ryan you know? Murphy t- said in EW last week, he was like, this was his favorite episode shot so far. He said it's going to impact far beyond the night that it you know pr- premiered which it was I mean we had yeah Lala Ree upstairs yeah. watching crying, her crying watching, watching the, the footage footage and, and listening to Freedom right mm-hmm. and then we see Queenie get shot in the stomach yeah. and then of course fans what do you think this is going to be the fan coven yeah. sound off is, is she, she going to come back from the self inflicted injury yeah, because right. she because shot she herself. herself. She pretty much shoots her, shoots her brains out, but yeah. she's targeting mm-hmm. Hank, and we see Hank go down. Yes, but is she, but we also don't see Queenie after we that. We don't see Queenie get up, and we don't see Queenie after that. We see his Hank's father looking at pictures of him right. Right. Dead. dead. Right. So that's a confirmation mm-hmm. that Hank's dead. But yeah, I think it's a great Twitter question. All the Twitter fans yes, out yes, there, no. you know, tweet these guys here yes. because, like we were saying before, you know, in earlier episodes, again, when Queenie would, sl- you know, slit her throat or something, when whoever her target was, but she always repaired. So what is going on, everybody? Right. Let Can us know. she repair? We don't know. After shooting her brains out, hmm. yeah, and then also like just the with the you were saying the music, the oh. freedom. It was like no, I don't want Queenie to die. No, yeah. and I'm I not ready so for scared. her. I didn't know where um, Madame Laveau was. I was like, did she get out? Did she like know this was happening? Like I, when he saw her, I was like, oh my god. Well, like, like I, he tried like I to said, shoot her. In, yeah, he did. in news and gossip, I think last week or two weeks ago, um, we find out that there is going to be like a voodoo Satan that appears in the episodes oh, after right. the break. So. Right. We saw, what we saw a little preview. What preview we think that. is that she has sold her soul to the devil, and that is why she is beautiful and she cannot die. And you know, that's that's just something to come. But sort of one of the other things that happened before we wrap up the last scene is um, Patty Lapone in the hospital with Luke, right. oh. yes. uh, and the B story comes out about how she murdered.
her husband. Right. So how quickly does her tune change about Nan, first of all? Mm. Yeah. You know, mm. when she's like, you are amazing. You know, you have given me this gift and helping my son and all this stuff. And then the second that the information that comes out of her son is critical of her. She's like, like, oh, get, get out, out of here. Yeah. Like, you're dark, you know, blight on our family dark or whatever. Sided. But it was like, wow, that was convenient. Yeah. I love the female ferocity. Just, it, I mean, everyone has their own angle on it. Like, I don't think everyone's attitude is the same, which I appreciate. Right. Uh, it's just amazing. This, I feel like, only further makes me believe that she's some sort of witch hiding behind her religion because mm. if there was a swarm of bees in this man's car, there's no way that he, him opening the door yeah. would not notice that there were bees in there. Yeah. No, you're right. So, I 100%. True. I watched last week's episode with you guys, and I was like, yeah, I totally agree. She has to be. I mean, she has to have some sort of summoning power sure. Yeah. where she can... Even if she doesn't know it, right. it's there. Right. Also, she didn't acknowledge the fact that she was brought back by a witch. Right. Like, at all. <laughs> None of that was even no. addressed. Thanks, Misty. Yeah. She did. Yeah. Rude. Yeah. Realize it. Rude. She did say, uh-huh. she admitted that she had had dark moments, which I was like, hmm, yes. moments plural. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we've seen, I guess, a couple of her dark uh, moments. Yeah, I hope that that's I wonder what how we've seen. Much darker I know. They get. Yes, but, and so apparently she's killed her husband, and then Luke wakes up and says, you killed dad. So this is... Go ahead, sorry. And she goes to smother him with a pillow. This yeah. is what... I mean, Does obviously, kill him? another crazy... Is he dead? We will have to wait this to see. This whole loyalty and family yes. to be cousins up again, where it's like, is Luke supposed to stay loyal to his mother no matter how much abuse he, she lays out on him? Right. You know, or does he... He goes to the other side and comes back and is like, oh my gosh, do I need to be loyal to my father? Right. You killed him. Right. You betrayed him. Like, there's so many... Every character is going through something where they feel pulled from two different sides. Yeah. And they feel like they're getting pulled apart a little bit about where their loyalties lie. Do you think that Luke, if he is dead, that the girls are going to bring him back? Yes. Nan, Nan, <laughs> well, Nan will know right away when he dies. Right. Yeah, because right. he'll yes. stop talking. Right. So I am curious to see that, but the, the last scene, because I want to get to news and gossip yes. and everything like that, yeah. the last scene we see um, Marie Laveau come and knock on the White Witch's door. Mm-hmm. Hi. She's like, hey, girls, let's work together. Yeah. yeah. The alliance is on. The She's alliance like, oh, yeah. is on. Mm. So good. So well, because good. Such now, a great way to end our mid-season before we yeah. go on a break, and I think it leaves a lot to a lot for us to think about. Yeah, there's one thing I want to cover that we didn't talk about. Yeah, that was um, Misty Day and Cordelia together when they resurged the plant, mm-hmm. yeah. and it, like I was kind of wondering what, like, if they're just practicing. Or if they're trying to get their spells together, are well, they making the mud? I think they the were mud? putting together guys... a protection spell or a protection something. Because they do... ate they ate the things that were on the planet, right. and yes. so and everyone in the coven needed, needed to, to eat, eat it. Yes, and you only do this in a in a case of an emergency. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Fans, did you catch what the berry was or what that was? Well, it was sage. Yeah. Like well, she, was a, she was asking about, um, <laughs> oh, I didn't know bay leaves were, you know, had magic. We were just like, oh, mm-hmm. they're for protection. And right. then they go through all the ingredients. They make this kind of mud stew and mm-hmm. they put it on the plant. Mm-hmm. But it was just fascinating to watch this plant go from dead to life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I'm wondering what that has to do with protecting them. That's a good question. You know what I mean? And we see the resurgence yeah, coming through every episode. It might be the plant itself. Mm-hmm. Goes from dead to yeah. living. Yeah. I thought it was interesting, uh-huh. too, that she was like, I have so much to learn from you. And Foxy was like, no. no. Like, Fiona <laughs> is your supreme. Like, right. you. Yeah. And then also, Myrtle refers to Misty Day and her mud, and she says m- m- the mud is her metaphor. Yes. And that was incredible. Yeah. I thought the way she exp- explained that in the beginning of the episode was of awesome. just how, you know, she has such incredible powers, but she doesn't even know it. Yeah. And she's hiding in plain sight, kind of. Yeah. No. So great. So I much to it. come. I know. I'm so excited. Let's cool. jump right into news and gossip. After Buzz yeah. TV News. Um, got yeah. Fun? So I did some research on Angela Bassett. Um, shout out to my coworker Danielle because she's obsessed with her. So she gave me all this information. Yay. Nice. Um, Thanks, Danielle. So apparently, um, Angela Bassett turned down the lead role in Monsters Ball. Which went to Halle oh. Berry oh, because she won the Oscar because she wouldn't do a nude scene. 
But everything's coming full circle because early in Angela's career, she did a half nude scene in a horror movie called Critters 4. No. So she's done horror before, ladies and gentlemen. Critters 4. Critters 4. I think I I remember that movie. Yeah, well, she did. It was like a shower scene. So you saw her butt, but nothing else. You know, tasteful for Miss Angela Bassett, obviously. Um, But yeah, she turned down the role to Halle Berry. Nude in the I Can Tina movie. You know, I I That's don't got know. To do yeah, I, I I never saw that, but but that was sort of <laughs> my either. chunk Sorry. of information. And Miss also, Sorry. if you all haven't Aging seen, um, Ryan Murphy posted a photo of Misty Day and Miss Stevie Nicks on Twitter, yes. and yes. I tweeted it um, so earlier excited. in the week, but I will retweet it again because it it's was amazing. That good, you <laughs> need to see it. And I just, I can't wait. Oriana, you had something too, right? Yes. Well, I mean, congratulations to uh, Jessica Lange for being nominated yeah. um, yes. for a SAG Award yes. for Best she Actress. It. Uh, oh, yeah. Best Female Actor in a Drama. Mm-hmm. Is that what it is? It mini, is it the one of those miniseries? No, it's not a miniseries. No? It was for Best Actress for, oh. in a Drama, okay. I believe. But it's for this character, um, for Fiona Good. Um, so congratulations to her. Right. And then this is very random, but um, I was was on set yesterday and I overheard someone talking about how they worked at Madame Laveau's. And so this was a fellow, this was an actor talking about a summer job. And now uh, Madame Laveau's is actually, it is her home and her property, historically, supposedly. And they sell voodoo tchotchkes. Paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. So I started doing research at the time going, well, I wonder what happened to Madame LaLaurie's house because we saw in the show that there was a tour. Right. And he had said, no, 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 it's apartment buildings. Well, just so you know, everyone, in April 2007, Nicolas Cage bought the LaLaurie house through Hancock Park Real Estate Company, LLC. This is from Wikipedia. For three and a half million dollars. And the mortgage documents were arranged in such a way that Cage's name did not appear on them. On November 13th, 2009, the property then valued at three and a half million was listed for auction as a result of bank foreclosure. Yikes. So Nicolas Cage... um, I remember there being some report on his fascination Mm -hmm. with kind of devil worshiping yeah. satanic right. murderers or whatever. This is that story that he bought Lollery's house, but when he had personal financial problems, it was repossessed. Love it. Oh, yeah. Hollywood connection. Yeah. Interesting. This is truly an American horror story. Yeah. <laughs> Legit. Love. <laughs> is that all our news and gossip? That, that is that we all have? it. Do you guys want to know who I made out with the other night? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yes, but yes. we'll save that for later. <laughs> um, let's jump into <laughs> predictions. I want to start with Brooke. And now, yeah. After Buzz TV predictions. Give us your predictions because we're not coming back until January 8th, people. Yes. Oh my God, I'm so sad I'm about this. There you guys. is a lot to that can happen. All right, Brooke, what do okay, you think? Brooke. Oh my God, I'm still like reeling and shaking from this episode. So, um, what do I think? You know, nothing, nothing genius on my part, other than I do think the Queenie comes back. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't think she's dead. I do think that um, that. Kathy Bates, what's her character? Yeah, I always know that. Lollery. Right. Thank you, Lollery. Thank you. Will her, her head will be put shit. back on her body? Oh, good. <laughs> I do okay. think so. I do. I, I do. Okay. Ooh, I'm getting intuitions right now. Um, I don't know. I think that Fiona's just going to keep getting more and more and more beautiful <laughs> and young. I don't know. Interesting. So many things could happen. This really kind of left me like in a tizzy. I have to say. Yeah. But yeah. It was so much fun to be here with you guys. Thank you Thank for coming. You. Um, Ariana, yeah, um, my prediction is that Myrtle is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> my prediction is that we're watching her. I don't know. I just felt like she started a slow descent today yeah, um, into maybe the recesses of her mind or her whatever, you know, dark parts of her that hadn't been realized in her previous incarnation. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my prediction. I think she may cause some harm. I don't know. She may cause some divisions or cause some trouble. Um, and I also think that um, Frank and Kyle and Fiona are going to get close. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Um, oh. like well, uh, I don't really have that much of a prediction because I would love to just see what happens, let it flush out. Yeah. Um, but I did see a photo of um, Lily Rabe, Misty Day, on Twitter, and she was dressed all in black at a graveyard. Um, we found out that that's where she's going to meet Stevie. Oh, nice. um, and the black tells me that now she's officially a part of the coven yes. because oh, we, yes. see the, we see the color changes. Oh, right. That's like a big theme. Mm-hmm. So she's, she's wearing a lot of white, white also dying for her headband. I need to find that. Live for that. Yeah. Um, but 
American She's wearing flag. all black. Uh, so I am thinking she has officially found her coven. Okay. Good point. Nice. We can also um, ask our Twitter fans out there oh, to yeah. find the headband for you because they found the red dress. I watched yeah. the headband. I as well. MM's so red dress. Thank you for mm-hmm. the fan that found that. I retweeted it. But nice. Yeah. yeah. Sarah. I'm good. I don't like the predictions. I'm going to break that. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. No predictions for Sarah. <laughs> I. You know, what we saw in the promo was that they're looking for the hive of witch hunters. Mm. She says, we found, we know of one, we need to find the hive. Kill the queen, you kill the hive. Um, Hank the Skank Sr.'s going down? I don't know. No, I don't think that's going to happen next week. It doesn't matter. It could happen eventually. There's how many more episodes? Three? Four. Four, Four, I think. Well, we yeah. want to hear your predictions. I don't know. Yeah, I don't have any know. predictions either because Fans, so let us know what you much think. You're you so let us insightful. know. Yes. We have, I think, three weeks it is before we come back. We're going to so miss you guys. Holidays. We are definitely yeah. going to miss you guys. Thank you to Brooke for joining yes, us. Yay. Tell our fans thank where they can guys. find you. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Everybody, keep watching the show. These guys are amazing. Uh, thank um, you. Tweet me at Brooke Lewis LA. BrookeLewis.com is my press site. Uh, the official Brooklyn's fan page on Facebook and MsVampy.net. Uh, I'm everywhere. So, Yay! Thank you. so look right. out for Brooke, you guys. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at you can call me Skiff. I'm on Twitter at Sarah on the Go, Sarah with an H. I am on Twitter at Jillian Left or my website, JillianLeft.com. On Twitter at Miss Oriana Leo, Instagram Oriana Leo or Facebook. Oriana Leo official. Tweet us. Tweet us. Please, tweet us. We really want to hear from you over the break, you guys. Yeah, we and we'll love get that. back to you as soon as we possibly can. We'll see you in, in the, new, the year. new year. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs>